I've tested quite a few new Fitbits over the last weeks and this little Fitbit, the Fitbit Inspire 3, might actually be my favorite out of all of them. If one of my friends wanted to buy a Fitbit, this is the one I would most likely recommend. And I'll show you why in this video, where I'll systematically and unbiasedly test the heart rate tracking accuracy, sleep tracking performance, and step counting accuracy of the Fitbit Inspire 3. By the way, even though I'd recommend the Inspire 3 out of all the Fitbits I recently tested, whether or not you should buy any Fitbit at all is another question altogether, which I'll also address in this video. Hello everyone, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now I'm not gonna bore you by listing all the specs of this new Inspire 3 because that's been discussed in many videos already. However, I did wanna make three short remarks about the Fitbit Inspire 3. First of all, the biggest change compared to the Inspire 2 is the new screen. The Inspire 3 now has a color screen and also a slightly different design. In general, it looks less bulky to me and I honestly like the overall design much better. Second, the Inspire 3 is still the entry-level Fitbit, setting you back about $100, making it the most affordable Fitbit from this latest generation. Finally, you should be aware that the Inspire 3 does not have built-in GPS, so you will need to take your phone with you to track your workouts. Now that's enough background, let's get to the test results. And I want to start off with the heart rate tracking accuracy, since this is probably one of the most important features for most people buying a health tracker. I tested the heart rate accuracy during a total of 18 workout sessions. To test that, I'll compare the heart rate measurements of the Inspire 3 against the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which can generally record my heart rate very accurately. We'll start by looking at one of the easiest types of exercises for watch the track, cycling indoors, and I'll be looking at a total of four interval spinning sessions. Now this generally involves very little movement or tension on my arms and should therefore produce less noise. And here we can see an overview of that accuracy over several rides. Now each dot here is a single heart rate measurement with along the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and on the vertical axis the value according to the Inspire 3. Now the closer the points are to the blue line the better is the agreement and the darker black the color the more dots there are. Now luckily as you can see many points are very close to the blue line indicating that the Inspire 3 detected a correct heart rate in the majority of cases. However, we do see clouds of points below and above the blue line as well, indicating it detected both too low and too high heart rates on occasions. Now the correlation, this R value up here, is also decent, at a value of 0.9. This correlation value cannot be higher than 1, so a correlation of 0.9 is not too bad at all. However, if we now look at the individual training sessions, we actually see something very interesting. And here we can actually see the first example training session where we see a pretty decent match between the Inspire 3 and the ECG chest strap. Now along the horizontal axis we have the time and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. In blue-green I plotted my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and in red is my heart rate according to the Inspire 3. And as you can see the two lines overlap quite okay most of the time. However, the one thing I notice is that when there are quick changes in my heart rate, the Inspire 3 struggles sometimes, as you can see for instance right here, but also right here and right here. What I find particularly interesting is that the Inspire 3 in some ways at least does better than the much more expensive Fitbit Versa 4 and Sense 2. Both of these struggle to detect the peaks in my heart rate, but the Inspire 3 can detect this. Now just to show you that, this is one example training session with the three times as expensive Sense 2, so the Sense 2 is now displayed in red instead of the Inspire 3. And as you can see, the Sense 2 always tends to detect a too low heart rate when my heart rate is high. And this is not something that the Inspire 3 struggles with, so this is actually quite interesting. Now let's switch back to the Inspire 3 which is displayed here for another training session, and we can see that this doesn't have this issue. The Inspire 3 is able to pick up on the peaks in my heart rate quite correctly. And that is actually what we see for most training sessions. The Inspire 3 mostly follows along quite nicely with the ECG chest strap. Only in this training session right here did it show some more issues, where it showed some larger delays in picking up the changes in my heart rate. As you can see right here for instance, but also right here and right here. However, overall I would say it's not doing too poorly, though there is definitely some room left for improvement. However, let's put this into perspective by comparing it to 67 other watches I've tested over the last two years. 
that overview is displayed right here. Now the correlation value I was talking about before is the metric I'll use for this, and that is displayed along the horizontal axis. We want that value to be as close to one as possible. And on the vertical axis, I ordered the watches from worst to best. So the further to the right and the higher a device is, the better is its correlation with the reference device. And here I marked the Inspire 3 in red, and as you can see, it's a medium performing watch. It's somewhere in the middle roughly when it comes to its performance for heart rate tracking while cycling indoors. However, let's zoom in a bit to see which watches are close to it. Now here I only display the watches with a correlation of 0.8 or higher. And as you can see, the Inspire 3 is close in performance to the Versa 4. Now honestly, this surprised me a little bit since the Inspire 3 optically at least appears to perform a bit better when looking at the heart rate graphs. Now I think this is partially because it makes a different type of mistakes than the Versa 4, and this also shows a limitation of using a simple metric like the correlation. However, what we can appreciate is that there's many better performing watches out there. Even for instance, the relatively cheap first generation Huawei watch fit does quite a lot better than the Inspire 3. And as we've seen before, Apple watches are some of the best heart rate trackers out there. Overall, the Fitbit Inspire 3 is an okay heart rate tracker for cycling indoors, at least in my opinion, though it definitely has some issues still. Next, let's take a brief look at another type of exercise, which can be quite hard for some watches to track, running. Now here are the results for an interval run that I did. Again, in blue, green are the measurements of the chest strap, and in red, the Inspire 3. Now, as you can see, the Inspire 3 was only partially able to follow along with the ECG chest strap. Quite often, it actually tended to detect a too low heart rate, which is not that great. To me, based on this very limited test, it doesn't appear to be very reliable for running. But as I said, I'm just basing this on a single run. Next, let's take a look at another more challenging type of exercise, cycling outside. Now, while cycling outdoors, watches tend to shift a lot more on the wrist, making accurate heart rate readings much more difficult. To see how this affected the Inspire 3, I tested it during a total of 9 bike rides. Now, this is a similar overview plot to before, but now for biking outside. And as you can see, the agreement with the ECG chest strap is not that good. There are quite some points away from the blue line. There are some above it right here, but there are especially many below it right here in the higher heart rate ranges, indicating it detected a too low heart rate in these moments. The correlation value, this R value here on the top left, is also mediocre at best, at a value of 0.69. Again, let's get some more detail by looking at some of the bike rides themselves. Now this first bike ride actually looks pretty decent, and though I should say that the Inspire 3 missed some of the dips in my heart rate, it generally followed along quite nicely with the ECG chest strap. However, there's also plenty of bike rides that look a lot worse, and this is one example, where for the second part of the ride, it kept detecting a heart rate of around 120 BPM, where it should have detected much more variation in heart rate. And we see the same thing for this example ride right here. Again, it keeps detecting a stable heart rate of around 120 to 130 BPM. And it was generally a bit hit and miss, with some rides also looking a lot better, like this one right here for instance. We can again put this into perspective by looking at many of the watches I've tested over the last years. And similar to before, we will use the correlation with the ECG chest strap on the horizontal axis, and the better the agreement, the more to the top right the device is. As you can see, the Inspire 3, again marked in red, is very similar in performance to, for instance, the Charge 4 and Charge 5, both also from Fitbit. However, surprisingly, it does a lot better than the more expensive Fitbit Versa 4 and Sense 2. However, still, I wouldn't say it's a great heart rate tracker for cycling outside, since there are definitely many better devices out there. Again, some of the best choices are some Huawei watches, but definitely also Apple watches. I honestly have mixed feelings about the Inspire 3 so far, but let's now move on to one of the most difficult exercises for a watch to track, weightlifting. As I've mentioned previously, this is much more difficult because of the increased tension on my wrist and arm, making it much harder for the watch to get a clean heart rate signal. However, first a quick side note. If you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter and posting more off-the-cuff things on my Instagram and my YouTube Shorts channel. So if you're interested in any of those, those are linked below. Of course, you would also make me really happy and it would help my efforts if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. But of course, this is totally up to you. Now enough self-promotion, let's take a look at the performance during weightlifting, which I tested for a total of four training sessions. 
Now here you can see an overview of that accuracy similar to before. Now the overall performance doesn't appear to be that amazing again. There are still quite a few points away from the blue line, indicating the watch quite often detected an incorrect heart rate. The correlation is also not very high, at a value of 0.73. If we look at the individual training sessions, we see that like many other fitness trackers, for weightlifting, the Inspire 3 is not good at tracking my heart rate at the peaks of my heart rate. Now, each time I do a set of exercises, my heart rate increases, which you can see in blue right here, but the Inspire 3 can only occasionally detect this, and this is what we see for many of the training sessions. Some of the peaks in my heart rate are detected by the Inspire 3 and some are not detected, so it's very much hit and miss if the Inspire 3 will detect the peaks. Now we can again put this into perspective by comparing it to many of the other watches I've tested in the past, and we can see those results in this overview right here. Again, the more to the top right, the better is its consistency with the ECG chest strap. And as you can see, relative to other watches, the Inspire 3, marked in red, is doing okay, though not great, yet similar in performance to some other Fitbit watches. When we zoom in a bit, we see that its performance is not that different from the Fitbit Versa 4 and also the Fitbit Lux. Still though, I would say that generally its correlation is actually quite low still. Overall, I would not recommend you use the Fitbit Inspire 3 for tracking your heart rate during weightlifting. As I've mentioned before, Apple watches and some Huawei watches are the only ones I would use for heart rate tracking during that exercise. In general, it's probably best to use an ECG chest strap anyway. Overall, based on my initial testing, I would conclude that the Fitbit Inspire 3 is a mediocre heart rate tracker. It does okay as while I'm spinning, but not that great for the other exercises. It does appear to do slightly better than the more expensive Sense 2 and Versa 4, which is a bit surprising. Therefore, overall, I'd give the heart rate tracking of the Inspire 3 2.5 out of 5 stars. Now, as I mentioned before, my go-to devices for heart rate tracking are Apple Watches, and for Android, some Huawei watches are also quite good. Now, as we've seen in some of my recent videos, but also in many of my older ones, Fitbits have generally been quite good at sleep stage tracking. So let's see if the Inspire 3 does as well as the other Fitbit devices. Now to check if the Inspire 3 can actually detect my sleep stages, I'll compare it to an EEG device called the Dream 2 that can actually measure my brain waves and has been shown to be relatively reliable at sleep stage tracking. Now here I show an overview of the sleep test results. For getting an overall impression of how well the Inspire 3 performs, the Dream 2 should likely be good enough. However, the gold standard for sleep tracking is polysomnography, which I would also like to try on the Inspire 3 in the future. Now on top are the sleep stages as recorded by the EEG device, and on the left are the sleep stages as recorded by the Inspire 3. I wore both the EEG device and the Inspire 3 to bed for 7 nights, and I will see how close the predictions of the Inspire 3 are to those of the EEG device. Now each column here in total sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the sleep stages according to the Dream 2 was predicted as each sleep stage by the Inspire 3. If they perfectly agree, all values on the diagonal should be 100%. First of all, we see that about 97% of what was deep sleep according to the EEG device was also deep sleep according to the Inspire 3, which is pretty good. Now, when what was deep sleep according to the EEG device was predicted differently by the Inspire 3, it was often predicted as light sleep at about 20%. And we can actually see that based on the individual nights. On top, we have the sleep stages according to the Dream 2 EEG headband, with the clock time along the horizontal axis and the sleep stages on the vertical axis. And on the bottom, you have a similar plot, but now for the Inspire 3. And here I've highlighted all the EEG recorded deep sleep in purple. Now for this night, we actually see there's a pretty good deep sleep agreement between both devices. And this is basically what we generally see for Fitbits. Almost all of the deep sleep detected by the EEG device is also detected by the Fitbit, but some extra deep sleep is additionally detected. And that's what you see right here and right here for the Inspire 3 as well. And we see the same thing for basically all of the nights. Most of the deep sleep detected by the EEG device is also detected by the Inspire 3, but the Inspire 3 additionally detects a bunch of extra deep sleep. And as I said, we see something similar for all of the nights, like this one right here. Again, a pretty good agreement, but with extra deep sleep detected as well by the Inspire 3. Now, light sleep agreement was also pretty good at about 72%, which matches very well with what we saw for the Fibbit Sense 2 and the Versa 4 that I recently reviewed. And if the Inspire 3 did disagree with the EEG device on light sleep, it mostly predicted deep sleep, though sometimes also some of the other sleep stages. Now REM sleep agreement was also quite good at an agreement of 64% with the EEG device. And if it was predicted differently, it was mostly predicted as being light sleep at about 31%.
And based on the individual nights, we can see that quite clearly as well. Now this is a similar plot to before, but now with REM sleep as measured by the EEG device marked in red. And here we can generally see a pretty good agreement when it comes to REM sleep tracking between the EEG device and the Fibbit Inspire 3. There are some small differences, but overall this looks pretty good. And this second example night looks similar. There's generally a good overlap, though similar to what we saw for other Fibbits, the Inspire 3 tends to detect less REM sleep in total. However, I would say that the general agreement is pretty good, and we can also see most of the sleep cycles based on just the data from the Inspire 3 for this night. Now you go through roughly 4 to 6 sleep cycles each night, each one starting with light and deep sleep marked in blue, and each one ending in REM sleep marked in red. And as you can see, I likely had 1, 2, 3, 4 complete sleep cycles this night. And we are able to see most of these based on the data from the Inspire 3. The Inspire 3 only missed the first REM sleep segment and thereby also my first sleep cycle. And this is similar to what we've seen for the Versa 4 and the Sense 2 as well, where I often tend to have a first short REM sleep segment that fit the devices tend to miss. Awake detection generally also agreed very well, with an agreement of 87%, which is again very similar to what we saw for the other Fitbits, and actually even slightly better. And if there was any disagreement, this was mostly with light sleep, at about 10%, which does make a lot of sense, since light sleep is the closest sleep stage to being awake. In general, looking at the individual nights, it seems that the Fibbit Inspire 3 does tend to detect the long awake moments that the EEG device also detects, but it tends to disagree on some of the shorter awake moments. And you can see that right here, for instance, where it did detect the same two long awake moments, but it disagreed on the shorter ones. And we see something similar for this second example night. However, in this case, it also detected an extra awake moment that the EEG device did not detect, and you can see that right here. To put these results into context, we can compare the performance of the Inspire 3 to that of 44 other watches I've tested previously. Now this graph shows an overview of the agreement of different watches with the EEG device. Along the horizontal axis we have the average agreement over the four individual sleep stages and on the vertical axis we have the agreement of the worst sleep stage. Now the better the agreement the more to the top right the device is. And as you can see the best agreeing devices so far were different Apple watches. In this case the Apple Watch Series 7, Series 8 but also the Apple Watch SE and the Apple Watch Ultra. Other devices that perform well on me do include different Fitbits, but also whoop straps and a Withing Sleep Analyzer, though all of these are not quite as good as the Apple Watches. If we now show the Inspire 3 in the same plot, which is marked in red, we see it's very similar in performance to the other Fibbit devices I recently tested, and it's also similar to the Fibbit devices I tested a while ago. It potentially even seems to do a bit better than some other Fitbits, but I suspect this is just random variation in my measurements and it doesn't really reflect any systematic improvement of the Inspire 3 compared to other Fitbits, but that's just my best guess. So overall, the sleep stage tracking of the Fitbit Inspire 3 seems to be quite good and it's similar in performance to all of the other Fitbits I've tested. Therefore, I would give the sleep stage tracking of the Inspire 3 4 out of 5 stars. Honestly, only Apple Watches do better at tracking my sleep stages. However, as I also mentioned in my other videos, the main benefit of the Inspire 3 but also other Fitbits over Apple Watches is that the Inspire 3 can track your naps, whereas Apple Watches do not do this. The next thing I tested on the Fitbit Inspire 3 is this step counting accuracy. To test the step counting accuracy, I went out and took exactly 4,000 steps with the Fibbit Inspire 3. Now, I do not like counting 4,000 steps in my head, which is why I counted each step manually using this tally counter. Let's take a look at those results. And here are those results, where I wore the Fibbit Inspire 3 on my right arm. Along the horizontal axis, we have the time, and the total number of steps counted is on the vertical axis. Now, the red diagonal line represents the total steps counted by the Inspire 3, and the blue vertical lines indicate the moments you should have counted 1000 steps more. So the first line indicates 1000 steps, the second 2000 and so on. And as you can see, the Inspire 3 was pretty good at counting my steps, though it did always tend to count a few steps too many. This led to it in the end counting about 100 steps too many overall over the full 4000 steps. Still, I would say this is close enough, at least in my opinion, to the steps it should have counted, so it's not looking so bad. So the step counting is looking quite okay, though the Inspire 3 does over count some steps. The next question is if the Inspire 3 ever counts steps when it's not supposed to, for instance when doing activities that do not involve walking. And those results are displayed right here for 4 activities on the vertical axis. 
running, cycling, spinning, and weightlifting. Now on the horizontal axis is the number of steps per minute counted by the Inspire 3 for each of these activities. Now ideally I would say at least it should count close to zero steps during all activities that do not involve any type of walking or running. Now as you can see when I was running, which is displayed here in purple, it counted close to 140 steps per minute, which is roughly what I would expect from this type of exercise. When you're briskly walking you expect about 100 steps per minute, so 140 steps per minute for running makes sense to me. However, as you can see here in red, it also counted quite some steps per minute while cycling. On average, it tended to count about 25 to 30 steps per minute while cycling, which means a step every two seconds. I feel this is quite a high number for an exercise that doesn't involve any walking at all. And we see something similar for spinning here in green, where it counted about 20 steps per minute on average. Again, I do think this is quite a lot since it translates to about one step every three seconds. And of course, I'm actually stationary on a spinning bike. Now while weightlifting the Inspire 3 actually did quite well, as you can see here in blue-green, and it only counted a few steps per minute. So for this exercise I'm quite happy with its performance. So overall the step counting performance of the Inspire 3 is quite decent when you're actually walking, but it will give quite some false positive steps when you're not walking. Therefore overall I'd give the step counting accuracy 3 out of 5 stars. Now based on all these tests, I get the impression that the Inspire 3 performs very similar to all other Fitbit devices. It's okay at heart rate tracking while cycling indoors, and it potentially even does a bit better than more expensive Fitbits like the Sense 2. However, I generally would not recommend the Fitbit Inspire 3 or any other recently tested Fitbit device for heart rate tracking. Where the Inspire 3 does do quite well is in its sleep stage tracking, similar to other Fitbits. The main benefit I would say of the Inspire 3 over the other Fitbits is that it's just a lot cheaper while still performing similarly. Therefore if someone was thinking of getting a Fitbit for sleep stage tracking I would most likely recommend the Inspire 3 since you get all the functionality for a fraction of the price. The Inspire 3 does lack a GPS tracking when you compare it to the Sense 2 and the Versa 4. However this appears to be something that these newer Fitbits are not that great at anyway. So if GPS tracking is important to you, I would not recommend you buy one of these Fitbits. Now if you do want to buy a Fitbit, another device or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper and at the same time support the channel, there are different affiliate links in the description below that do not cost you any extra and some even provide a discount. Now if you want to know more about the performance of the new Google Pixel Watch, check out this video right here. Or if you want to know more about the best watches on iOS, the Apple watches, check out my complete reviews on these watches right here. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.